So this morning as we uh, share in this message together, we're going to look at Psalm 23 again, Psalm 23, 1 to 3. Psalm 23 is a a short uh, passage in scripture with six verses, but in those six verses are packed in incredible goodness of the Lord is packed in there. And so what we've been doing just in the last little bit is just trying to unpack some of that. And last week I began to lead you in a message about how to be led by the Spirit or God's Spirit or by the Holy Spirit. And when I got preparing for that message, I realized, wow, I have 10 things here. I have five things you need to stop doing, and then I have five things you need to start doing. And so last week, we looked at the five things that you need to stop doing if you want to be led by God's Spirit. And there's definitely things that that we do in our lives that really hinder God speaking to us. And let me remind you, as my family today, that God still speaks to his people absolutely 100 percent and he still guides us and directs us he's still the great shepherd and he still takes care of his sheep and uh, and so uh so as we continue this journey i just want to remind you that our god is not dead and he is alive very much and he has so much he wants to say to us but obviously the reason why we maybe don't hear what he has to say to us is maybe, as we touched on last week, there are some things we need to stop doing. Stop being controlled by our feelings, stop letting our circumstances determine how things should be, and so on. And I'm not going to re-preach that message uh, for $14.95. No, you, you can get it for free on our YouTube channel, and you can go back and look at part one and be a part of that. So today, let's look at five things that we need to start doing if we want to be led by God's Spirit. And uh, last week, um, I talked about how um, life is a series of choices, and we make our choices, and then our choices make us. And, uh, and so that's a very important thing to, to sort of put out there. Every decision that we make has a consequence and the potential that you and I have for error in making decisions in the journey of life is is really uh, it's quite significant i mean because we're human we're going to make we're going we're going to make errors we're going to kind of do all kinds of things we shouldn't do but god comes along he says in the midst of your imperfectness i want to guide you i want to show you the way that you can live your life i want to show you how to make right decisions matter of fact in psalm 23 that's kind of where we're, we're focused on he's And in verse 3, it says, he renews my strength, and notice this, he guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. And so as we started into that, we thought, well, how does he guide me? How does he show me the way? He's not only a shepherd who feeds us, but he's a shepherd who guides us and directs us. And he has so much he wants to to show us. And so today we're going to look at these five things that you need to start doing and I'm hoping that these are helpful to you. And you put them together with the five things you stop doing. And I, I guarantee you, not because Mark Parker says it, but I guarantee because the Word of God says it, that if you do that, you will begin to hear God shepherd you and lead you down the paths that are right for you and the direction you need to go, whether in business, whether in personal life, whatever it may be. So, so let's jump into this. Do you have your notes? Can you wave your note sheet if you have it? All right, good, good. Just all right. Don't don't give the neighbor a paper cut. All right. And so, um, but I'm glad you have that note sheet. So let's look at these five things that I think are really quite simple, but quite wonderful when it comes to getting guidance from God. When we want to know His divine direction for our lives, here are five things we need to start doing. Number one, we need to. And first of all, I must want to be led. That's where it all begins, folks. If you, don't want to, if you don't want to hear God's spirit, if you don't want to be led, no one's going to lead you. You can cross your arms, you can cross everything you have, and you can uh, do whatever you want to do, and you can just not be led. And you know what? It's your choice. But if you want to know what God has to say and the direction he wants to give you in your life, first of all, you've got to be willing to be led. So you've got to want to be led. And so it starts with that. It starts with that longing. It starts with that craving. And the problem is, let's face it, we're all here. No one else is listening except for everybody online. All right? 
is that sometimes as church people, we've lost our hunger for God. We've stopped craving the things of God. We go through the motions, but there's no heart to it. And so today, as we begin to think about how to be led by the Holy Spirit, God is not the problem. God is there, ready to guide us, to shepherd us, to show us the way to go. The problem is, is we've stopped craving his guidance. We stopped longing for it. When I was a boy, I can remember all, the, all us farm boys used to, after, in the summertime, we'd all have, we'd all be showing our muscles out, lifting up the hay bales and throwing them on the truck. Who could do two and three, you know, and all that thing. And, you know, so you're sweaty, you're from doing all, loading up the trucks back then. We didn't have machines that did all that for us. We did it ourselves. And so we would go down, and we'd go down to the, uh, to the brook, and we'd go to the swimming hole, and we'd all jump in there and have a great time. And I remember one particular event, we were all messing around, and someone, someone sat on top of me, all right? So we all were jumping in, and someone sat on top of me, and I couldn't get up from, for air. Air is a very important thing, all right? And so I couldn't get up, and I remember just becoming so panicky that I couldn't get up from all the the people that were on top of me and people were still jumping in and um and so it was just that that panic feeling that i've got to have air and so i I I fought my way to the surface and and got the air i think sometimes that's what we need to recognize that we need to have that kind of attitude in our lives that it's like air i need to know what god thinks what god wants me to do and we need to be so, so much craving for it, like craving for that air to breathe. And so as we as believers make this journey in life, sometimes if we're not careful, we lose that intensity. We lose that passion uh, in our prayer lives, in our Bible reading, and everything connected to God, and we go through the motions. Maybe this morning, maybe you rolled into the service, and maybe you're going through the motions. I hope not. I hope you just have that passion. Says the Lord today, along with my brothers and sisters, we want to worship you. But so when it comes to hearing God direct us, we've got to have that intensity, that passion, and we've got to have that like we're clawing for breath to breathe. I've just got to know what God wants me to do. And sometimes if we need to recognize the fact if we don't have that, if we're if we're just nonchalant about the things of God. And we go say, Lord, Lord, I wonder what your will is for my life. And the Lord's up there going, well, I can see you really have a big desire for it. Um, and the Lord wants to know that you really want to hear from him. And so we got to have that intensive. We got to want to be led. And uh, so, so this morning, as we think about that and we think about how we need to reach out and, and like eating food, like having breath, that we also need to know what God's will is for our lives. And we want to hear from him. And, and I want to encourage you to realize that God has so many great things he wants to say to you. He wants to show you which way to go in your life. He wants to help you out with everything that's a part of your life. No detail is too small. But first of all, number one, you must want to hear from him. You must want to be led by him. You must have a desire in your heart that says, I've got to know what his will is for my life. Psalm 40, verse 8 says, My God, I want to do what you want. Your teachings are in my heart. And notice there in the psalmist, he says the reason he wants to do what God wants is because his teachings are in his heart. Are God's teachings in your heart? I think we need to remind ourselves of how we need to be passionate about really saying, Lord, I must be led by you. It's the most important thing there is, number one. Number two, I must be willing to do what God says. After God begins to speak to us and he begins to show us what we are to do, then I must be willing to do what he says. It's amazing how many people sometimes will say, Lord, I want to know what your will is, and God tells them, and they say, no, I don't like that. You got something else? And God says, no, that's my will for you. And we walk away and we don't do it because we don't like it. And so we must not only be, be, want to be led by him, but we must be, be, we must be willing to do what God says. 
So I not only want God's will, I must be willing to do it, and I must be willing to obey in advance. That's a very important point. I must be willing to obey even in advance. In other words, God says, I'm going to tell you what my will is for your life. I'm going to help you out. But regardless of what it is, I want you right now, without knowing all the details, without knowing all the facts, that you're going to say, yes, I will obey. We don't talk about that in our discipleship these days. We need to be willing to obey and obey in advance. And so we need to realize that God doesn't tell you his will, then you, then you get to decide whether you like it or not. You say, Lord, thy will be done. Period. Period. So as we think about what we need to start doing, we must be led and we must be willing to do what God says. You may say, God, I surrender my life to you completely, but I just don't want to do those things you're asking me to do. And again, it doesn't work that way. John 7, verse 17, Jesus said, whoever is willing to do what God wants and chooses it, and remember, it's a choice. God is not going to force his way into your life. You choose. And, uh, and he says, and, and chooses it. Um, it goes on and says, we'll know if what I teach comes from God. So again, in that verse, it reminds us that he says, you need to trust me in advance. You need to choose to obey and not only be led by me, but be willing to do what I say. And so, what are some things that we need to start doing? Is we say, Lord, I will do whatever you ask me to do, period. Period. We don't talk about that. Sometimes we think um, the gospel is like a salad bar. We wander down the row, we say, ooh, a little bit of this, ooh, I don't like that, ooh, a little bit of this, oh, I hate that. <laughs> it's not like that. God, whatever he lays out before you is perfect for you. And he will never do anything that will hurt you, harm you, or lead you in the wrong direction. He will lead you in right paths. And so our job is, is to obey and say, Lord, your will be done. Number three. The third thing, don't worry, I'm going to slow down. I'll go a lot longer on the other ones, all right? <laughs> Number three, if I want to be led by God's Spirit, if I want to be led by the Holy Spirit, I must look to God's Word. Simple, right? I must be led by Him. I must be willing to do what He says. And then thirdly, I must look to God's Word. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your Word is a lamp to guide me, there it is, to guide me, and a light for my path. And so, I want to remind us today that as we begin to look for God's guidance in our, in our lives, we must open up the Bible. We must open up the Bible, and sometimes we need to remind ourselves that it's not a voice that we need to hear. It may be, be a verse that God wants to give us to show us the right direction in which to go. And so when you look for God's will in your life, you must realize that you're going to, uh, you must look in God's word. Don't look other places. And as a matter of fact, uh, they tell us that the average believer today reads the Bible about eight minutes per week. Think about it. Eight minutes per week is what people do for Bible reading and who profess to be followers of Christ. If you're looking for God's will and you're not opening up God's word, you're not going to hear. You're not going to get that verse. You probably won't get that voice. And so we need to recognize the fact that if you're not in the Bible every day, you're walking in the dark. In the dark. It's as simple as that. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Shows me where I need to go, the old-fashioned, where they used to have the lanterns tied to their feet, and when they walked, it showed the way to go. And so if we're not opening up the Word, then we're in the dark. And you're walking through life without a, without a light, without even a flashlight. Psalm 119 says, in verse 133, says, Guide my steps by your Word, so I will not be overcome by any evil. 
Believers today are struggling with the temptation of the enemy because we have tried to go through life without opening the word. And you can't do it. You can't. Your life will be empty. It'll be shallow. It'll have lots of darkness to it. And so we need to be reminding ourselves that if you're looking for God's will, it's found in God's word. There it is. It's not complicated in any way. God's will is found in God's word, and, and most of God's will for us is revealed. No, he doesn't tell you the name of the guy that you need to marry. He doesn't tell you the, the name of the good-looking woman across the room that you want to date. He doesn't tell you that. But God tells you all the principles and the precepts and the things you need to know to choose the right man or the right woman. He tells you and he guides you. Everything you need to know is revealed in his word. He may not give you the names, but as you read God's word, he will speak to you. When you open his, his word, God opens his mouth and begins to talk to you, begins to show you the way that you need to go. But if you don't open it, you don't hear what God has to say. And so again, I remind us today that God's will is found in God's word. We need to stop listening sometimes, looking for a voice, and just start looking for a verse. Let God's word begin to speak into your life, into your circumstances. Some people will say to me, well, Pastor, that sounds so nice for you to say that, but couldn't God just kind of write it in the sky? Like, couldn't he kind of show me exactly what it is I need to do and just write it out there for me? Why would he write it in the sky? He's already written it in a book right? He doesn't need to write it in the sky. But you and I need to open it, speaking of the book, the Bible, on a daily basis. Stop looking for some kind of special voice and start looking to see what the Word says. And God will teach you the principles you need to know. Isn't that great? So we need to realize God's will is found in God's Word. is not found with Dr. Phil or Oprah on TV, it's not found with your best friend, it's found in his word, if you want to know what his will is. The next thing I would say to, about that before I leave it is that God expects me, and this is a very important statement I want to make, God expects me to obey what I already know before he will show me something new. Think about it. Sometimes... And searching out God's will, God shows us a step we need to take. And we say, I don't want to do that. What else do you have? And God says, we're not leaving that step until you deal with it. God will not show you step two until you've dealt with step one. That's a very important principle. And so if we are refusing to really kind of deal with the light that we already have, but yet we're looking for something further down the road. God says, why should I show that to you? You're not even dealing with what's right in front of you. And so today we have believers who have, in their estimation, pulled over and stopped because they just won't deal with that step one. And they're there, they're there, they're there. And they're hoping for something more further ahead, but it's not being shown to them because they've got to deal with, with step one. So folks, this morning, that's a very important principle. If you're struggling and you know God wants you to do something, but you refuse to do it, he's not going to show you what's further ahead until you deal with the light that you already have. Any amens to that? All right. That's very good. God says that you and I need to be led by the Holy Spirit. If we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, we need to realize that what we need to start doing is we need to start looking into his word. And when God begins to speak to us from his word, he never contradicts his word. He never goes against his word. Matter of fact, Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8 says, Let God's curse, this is heavy, let God's curse fall on anyone, including us, or even an angel from heaven, who preaches a different kind of good news than the one preached to you. And so when I read that, it reminds me that even if an angel shows up to you and says, you know what? Um, don't worry about what the Bible says. You need to do this, you know, you know, or need to do whatever. Don't believe it. Everything that God wants us to have is contained within his word. Don't let anyone change it or direct you away from it. 
God's will will never contradict God's word. God's will is found in his word. Number four, I must ask, here's another simple one, I must ask the Holy Spirit to be my guide. I must ask the Holy Spirit to be my guide. When I went to high school, how many of you while you were in high school um, had a guidance counselor? Did you have one of those? Were they supposed to come along and give you career advice? Not that I had too much confidence in them, but, but, um, but there was a guidance counselor. And when we think about what the Holy Spirit is supposed to be us, for us in life, he's, our, he's our, our, our guidance counselor. He's the one who's there to help us down the path and to, to know what to do. But before he becomes that to us, we must ask him to be our guide. We must ask the Holy Spirit to come and to show us the way we go. And, and so we have this guidance counselor for life, and he's called the Holy Spirit. And, um, and when I was thinking about that, I was thinking, you know, God's given us his word, but he's also given us the author of the word to speak into our ear and to show us the way to go through life. And that author is the Holy Spirit. It doesn't get any better than that. You got, you got the book and you got the author of the book, guiding you every single day. Folks, that should put a fire in your belly about the things of God, to know what he has done for us. And so, but before all that can take place or unfold, we've got to ask the Holy Spirit to be our guide. He's got to be the one that we say, Lord, I really want you. And one of the reasons we don't know God's will is because we haven't asked him for it. Matter of fact, James chapter 4 verse 2 says, you have not because you do not ask God for it. That applies to really being led by the Holy Spirit. How many of us are being asked to be led by the Holy Spirit? How many of us are praying over our job? How many of us are praying over our, our dating? How many of us are praying over our, the issues we're struggling with maybe in, in our senior years? How many of us are asking the Holy Spirit to guide us and to help us to make the right decision? And so we need to understand that God is interested in every detail of your life. He tells us that the very hairs of our heads are numbered. Mine are getting less all the time. And he knows everything about you. But he wants you to ask him to come and to, to, to be that shepherd, that, to be that guide. Psalm 27 verse 11 says, Teach me, Lord, what you want me to do and lead me down the right path. How does God lead us down the right path? He leads us down that path by, letting, by, by guiding us and reminding us of what's, first of all, in the book, the Bible. He reminds us and points us in the right direction by impressing his word upon us. He puts ideas in our, in our minds as we read the word of God, and he keeps directing us, directing us, and directing us down the right path. Finally this morning, not only can you always trust God's guidance system for your life, and he's never wrong, by the way, um, you just, the question is whether you're going to believe him, but finally, I think one of the fifth things we need to start doing is, number five is, I must listen for God's response. I'm the worst person for this. Sometimes... Because I'm, I'm in the people business, if you want to put it that way. It's like I meet a lot of people, so, so sometimes I'm shaking hands with people. Hi, how are you? And I don't wait for the response. Don't look at me. You do the same thing, all right? And sometimes that's the way we are with God, is that we say, God, I'm really praying about this. I really want to know what you want me to do. And then we say, oh, let me, oh I got a text. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, that's on TikTok. I better take a look at that. We pray and ask God what he wants us to do. Then we don't wait for him to respond to us. Our lives are so distracted by so many other things, we don't take time to listen for God's response. God's going, oh, 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 oh. but we don't listen. And so one of the, fun, the best things, and I'll finish off with this, is that one of the really big reasons we don't hear God is because we don't, not, not only is because we don't ask, but... Once we do ask, we immediately run off. We don't wait. We're not quiet. We don't listen. We don't pause. We say, God, I need to know this or I need to know that. And then we take off. And we start listening to something on our iPhone. We start you know, answering calls, watching TV, 
And then all the circuits get jammed and God says, I just can't get through. Scripture that we have written on our prayer room wall is be still and know that I am God. And so today I would encourage you as a church family to practice that discipline of stopping and just listening for what God's response is in your life. I can't overemphasize this enough, the importance of how you and I need to take private time alone every day just to sit quietly in the presence of the Lord. As your pastor, I want to tell you that one of the best things I love is when this place is empty and I come and I just sit in the auditorium and I just sit and I talk with the Lord and I try to hear what he has to say. Isn't it great to have that kind of job? (laughs) <laughs> oh boy are we paying him for that <laughs> but you know what it's so imperative that we all do that that we all do that Job 33 verse 14 says Job says this, God does speak sometimes one way and sometimes another even though my people may not understand it God is speaking to his people today but sometimes we're so busy and so distracted that we don't even listen for a response. God uses the Bible. He uses teachers like what I'm doing right now. He uses impressions. He uses sometimes circumstances. Um, Sometimes God does use a circumstance. He can use pain. He can use all kinds of different things. But we need to be reminded that one of the greatest things he does use is his word and how we listen to it and open it every day. So this morning, as we conclude this message, I want us to close with a verse from Psalm 77, verse 19. It's actually a verse about Moses. And uh, you remember the story of the Ten Commandments, all about Charles, uh, Charles Heston. Uh, uh, no, remember him? He was in the Bible. All right. Um, and the Ten Commandments and Charlton Heston, and he stood up there and he... He put something in the water, turned the Nile red, and, and of course, all the different miracles and things that happened like that. Then finally, as we look at all that and all the things that was going on and how God took a million Jews, led them out of uh, out of Egypt and led them away into the desert, and, and eventually they came to a point where they got boxed in, they had no way to go, um, and Pharaoh changed his mind. He decided to come after them. He's going to kill them. He's going to annihilate them. But here they were boxed in. Couldn't. They got mountains on the side. They got water in front of them. And it's interesting to me in that there on that Sinai Peninsula, probably one of the best lessons that you and I could learn comes from that story. Psalm 77 verse 19 talks about it, I think. And it says, your road, and notice this verse, Your road, Lord, led by a pathway through the sea, a pathway no one knew was there. When I think about that, and I think about looking for God's guidance in my life, and the great shepherd leads me and guides me and directs me, sometimes you may think you are led down a pathway that looks impossible. You're led down a pathway where you don't think you have any options. And so you quickly try to figure out your options. You try to come up with solutions. But maybe God led you down that pathway, brought you to that point where the only thing you can do is say, Lord, save us. And depend on him completely. It's amazing how we try to figure everything out. But sometimes God is leading us on a pathway that we don't know about, that we don't know is there, but it's the right path at the right time going to the right place. This morning, I want, as we conclude this message on how to be led by the Holy Spirit, do you really trust God to lead you down the right pathway, to show you to the right place, to help you to navigate the right person he wants you to be with, the right places you need to be working, the, how to handle family difficulties, or are you so busy come up with your own solution Sometimes God has to corral us in like he did with that one million uh, Jewish people and corral them in where they realize the Lord has to provide or we're done for. 
and course he parted the water, led them through on dry ground, and he showed them what a mighty God he really is. When's the last time God showed you how mighty he is? When's the last time that you just knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, I am in the center of God's will? And what a beautiful place to be. Do you trust him? The Lord still leads his people. He still speaks to his people. As I conclude this message, let me ask you this morning, what is stopping you from hearing what God wants to say and to do within your life? Maybe it's one of the five things you need to stop doing, or maybe it's one of the five things you need to start doing. May God speak to you today and just strengthen you in every way so that you realize he's not dead. He's alive, and he cares about you, and he cares about everything going on in your life. Do you trust them this morning? Let's stand in closing. Lord, I want to thank you for today, and I want to thank you for reminding us from Psalm 23 that you guide us down right paths. But oftentimes, Lord, the reason we don't find ourselves on the path where we need to be is because, Lord, we're not listening to your voice. We're not listening to your word. We're not taking time to hear what you want to say to us. God, we're so busy doing most times just doing nothing so lord today may we become once again passionate may we once again become full of intensity and saying i want to live for god and i want to know what he thinks of my life i want to know what he wants me to do for a career what he wants me to do with my life lord today Help your people once again, right here in North America where we seem to struggle with this. Other parts of the world, they know this truth and they live it out every single day, where to find food, where to find shelter. They, they depend on you, Lord, for so much, but sometimes, Lord, today we have need of nothing. And so nothing drives us to you. Nothing causes us to be humbled. Lord, humble us today. Humble us and help us to have faith and to believe in you once again and to take time to hear your voice. And so, Father, as we conclude this service here today, help us to go from this place, not simply forgetting the message, but, Lord, help us to apply it and help us to live it out every single day. Lord, help us to open your word so that we can hear you open your voice to us. God, Help us to shake off sometimes those dusty Bibles. Maybe sometimes even put away the digital stuff and, and just open up your word. Let your word speak to us and shepherd us and guide us. We need your help, God. It's so easy to say what we need to do, but it's a lot harder to actually do it. Lord, help every single one of us, including myself, to be led by your Holy Spirit. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing this song.